Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. It was the middle of the night when Katsuki Bakugo opened his eyes, annoyed. It were the last few weeks of summer and as such the local insect population had started its last hurrah. Wasps became aggressive, mosquitoes looked for every little droplet of blood and the night cicadas and increased the volume of their penetrant orchestra. And it were these cicadas that prevented him from sleeping. The explosive blonde sighed. The insects were so loud even with a closed window they still were too loud for his liking. Slowly he got out of bed. Sure, there was a curfew, but as long as none of the camera bots saw him, it was alright. The camera bots were on high security alert and would cause an alarm immediately, while the regular security cameras with an actual human sitting behind them, well, they were more lenient. They knew who was a student and who was an intruder. Bakugo stepped outside. The sweltering heat was subdued only by the breeze of the night. Due to the well-cooled dorms, it still almost felt like a punch to the face leaving the building. Oh well, maybe sweating for a bit would tucker him out enough to finally drift off to sleep. Yeah. The blonde didn't know where his feet would carry him, but he was certain wherever he landed would finally give him the rest he deserved. The night sky was pure black. Clouds had been tainting the sky since the middle of the day, and yet they refused to bring down rain. Nor did they allow the heat to dissipate. Bakugo stopped next to a lamppost, scowling. Insects were having an orgy around it. His hands crackled. And were insects keeping him awake, and right now any bug he saw was on his shit list. But he knew blowing away the lamppost would cause issues. Sure, the security guards might overlook a student going on a late night walk, but blowing up a lantern? Yeah, that would get him expelled. Especially after what him and Deco did. So he inhaled the hot air and kept going with an annoyed sigh. Soon, sweat was building up under his arms and forehead. He had trained his body to sweat as much as possible. After all, that was his ammunition, but right now, he was actually getting a little grossed out by the feeling. Perhaps he should take off his shirt. He stopped mid-thought for a moment. He heard something. Or more, someone. And suddenly he was hyper-aware of his surroundings. His muscles tensed his brain shooting out questions and answers at lightning speed. Where am I? Close to the sports area. Where's the noise coming from? From the pools nearby. What is this noise? Splashing, swimming, the popping of bubbles. Someone was using the pools. At this hour? You needed to request access to the pools. Hmm. Whoever it was was breaking the rules. Crouching, he huddled as closely to the ground as possible. Crawling forward through the thicket, lining the gravel path he had been walking on, towards UA's outdoor pool area. He pushed his head through a bush, slowly and quietly approaching, until he saw the blue glow of the lit up water. Then he saw it. The water was dead still with the exception of almost unnoticeable bubbles coming from the deepest part below. Bakugo narrowed his eyes. He was thinking, 
Unsure. Was someone drowning? No, the water was too still and the bubbles came in a relaxed rhythm. Was it a teacher? Training, perhaps? No, probably not. They never used UA equipment after dark. They were all pro heroes and had their own equipment at home anyways. Finally, he noticed movement. From beneath the water appeared a silhouette. Moments later, the person broke water. And Bakugo's eyes widened. It was a girl. She clearly had a mutation quirk. Her skin was a light turquoise with almost the exact same color as the pool's water, making her practically invisible. Her hair was a dark ocean blue with red star-shaped discolorations at the top of her head. She was dressed in the UA girl's swimsuit, tightly clinging to her body. She was lean and quite well-toned. Bakugo exhaled out of his mouth. He probably should leave now that this was no longer a potential dangerous situation, and yet, why couldn't he stop looking at her? Damn, Minena must have rubbed off on him. He'd give him a swirly for that tomorrow. He never seen this girl before. Must be a business class, or maybe a tinkerer? No, her muscles were too well developed. She definitely was aiming for hero stuff. Bako tapped the side of his head. Class B. That was the only other option here. He always had trouble remembering their faces. They were mere extras, after all. He was still trying to justify leaving, but still he remained in place. The girl lifted herself out of the water. Her hands and feet were webbed. He narrowed his eyes to get a better look. The webbing between her thumb and index finger was cut. Must have hurt like hell, but was understandable, would allow her to grab things better. It was then he noticed her eyes. They glowed, well, slightly glowed, probably unnoticeable during the day. They shined in a mild blue. She also didn't have a nose, instead just two holes where the nose should be. They opened and closed with every breath she took. They probably sealed up completely beneath water. Well, the Coast Guard was always looking for more heroes to join their ranks, so that's perhaps what she was aiming for. Wait, why am I seeing so much of her face now? He thought. Well, the answer was simple. You were looking right at him. You weren't upset at your audience, of course. Just your luck that one of your nightly swims was interrupted eventually. Thankfully, it was just another student. You crossed your arms, tapping the ground with your foot expectantly. You could definitely see him. And Bakugo sighed, standing up from the bush. Oh, it's that guy, you thought. Last time you'd seen him was during Class A's concert during the summer festival. He approached you. Thank God. You almost thought he'd run away. He had both his hands raised while his expression was unbelievably bored. Alright, alright, you got me. He said once he was in here range. How the fuck did you even see me? I didn't. I smelled you. Bakugo rolled his eyes. Of course. You tapped against your left nose hole. I can smell things underwater. So it's much more potent when it's above. Right. Okay, he had no control over that, so he refused to take responsibility for being found. Now that he was so close to you, he could see additional anomalies of your body. Your ears had the shape of fish fins. Your teeth came in two shark-like rows. The swimsuit clinged to your body tightly. He averted his gaze. There wasn't an ounce of fat on your body. Just pure musculature. That was so dense, if it wasn't for the bumps of a six-pack on your tummy, he'd call you skinny. But you probably packed a punch. Strong enough, you could probably knock out Kirishima in an arm wrestling match. Well, I suppose I won't report your peeping. If you don't tell anyone about my, uh, private swim time, alright? I wasn't peeping. 
you tilted your head. You weren't. With a fake aloof expression, you put a finger on your chin. Oh, really now? He pressed air through his clenched teeth. Why was he getting so worked up? By tomorrow, he would have already forgotten you exist. You leaned forward with a smirk. But you can't stop staring at me. I'm not staring. Why was he denying you? <gasps> really now? Wanna bet on it? Bet on what? <sighs> you seem like the head through the wall type, always wanting to prove yourself. I've seen you at the tournament, and I've seen you during our giant combat training. A shame we didn't get to a fight. An almost cat-like smug expression decorated your thin-lipped mouth. Wiggling a finger, you explained. To put it f simple, we fight. If you win, I accept that you weren't peeping on me, and I let you go without telling anyone you're a creepy little weirdo. What if you win? I let you touch my boobs. He pulled his head back in anger, his face flushing red. Doesn't that sound like a win-win for you? He gnashed his teeth in anger. His hands crackled dangerously. And that's when you quickly licked over your upper lip. That's more like it. Without warning, he punched, using a small explosion around his wrist to quickly guide his fist to your face. Meanwhile, you dodged, waiting until the last second of his punch to tilt your head into the direction of it. At the same time, you leap back into the water. He saw your body vanish beneath. Bakugo's heart was pumping as he looked at his hand. He could have sworn he hit you, but there wasn't any touch. The fuck was that? He took a step back. He didn't like this at all. Katsuki took on a fighting stance, while you waited. There was zero chance the fight was over already. He could just leave now and just count this as a win, with you going into the water as a forfeit. And yet, something at the back of his mind egged him on. Carefully, he took a step towards the water's edge. He breathed heavily. Silence. There weren't even bubbles. Wait, did he knock you out? Did you just drown? Concerned, he leaned over the water. His only thought being, Shit, did I kill her? But then, something wrapped tightly around his ankle, and Barker was immediately pulled into the cold depths of the sports pool. The moment his head went under the water, he looked down at his feet. The aggressive chlorine was making his sight blurry, but he could definitely see the glow of your eyes as you were dragging him deeper. He tried kicking you, but no matter how hard he tried, the resistance of the liquid was weakening his attacks too much. Crap, he couldn't hurt you. His body was already screaming for air, as he had been unprepared. Quickly thinking, he pushed himself further down, his hand grabbing onto your hair. He pulled, trying to cause as much pain as possible so you'd let go, but... A large bubble escaped his mouth out of fear. He didn't know why or how, but suddenly it felt as if your body had grown three times its size. Big, overpowering, all-consuming, borderline eldritch. Suddenly, Bakugo felt a heavy resistance on his butt. He had hit the ground. His body felt heavy. He was getting really tired. But he couldn't use the rest of his strength to swim up. A finger started to dig and pull at his body as you climbed up into your face to face. Your mouth was turned into a twisted smile, like the sea witch that you were. He tried punching, but it only generated a quiet slap underwater. It did absolutely nothing. Bakugo had never fought beneath the waves. And he felt so useless. And of course down here he couldn't use his explosions. Slowly he closed his eyes. His entire body was in pain. 
his muscles contracting. He felt an inescapable pressure on his body and lungs. He almost wanted to vomit, but he couldn't. The final bubbles escaped his lips. His eyes bulged out of their sockets. He was drowning. Oh God, he was drowning. His body was twitching. No, he needed to fight. But his body, it felt so heavy. Scared, he began thrashing around, which only caused him more precious energy. And then his eyes rolled back. Why? Why was it ending like this? He just wanted to go on a fucking late night stroll. He only vaguely felt something touch his lips. And suddenly, air was pushed into his lungs. Vaguely tasted of strawberries. Slowly, Bakugo opened his eyes. He was met with your face pressed against his. Both of you still underwater. You pulled away, smiling at him, allowing him to blow bubbles. That's when he noticed eight slits around your neck. Guilt. They were how you filtered the oxygen out of the water and how you could keep feeding him air. Barker go narrowed his eyes. You waited for him to spit out all of his bubbles. Just waiting until the pressure of drowning returned. With a smug expression, you returned your lips onto him, pushing back air to his body. What a monster you were. Just moments ago, Bakugo felt as if he was dying, and now... He felt strangely invigorated. He felt alive. It was the same feeling he got when Miria was beating him up. The motivation of almost being defeated, the motivation of being revived, the thrill of a second wind. He pulled his right arm back, and as you once again brought air to him, he punched you. Except that even now it wasn't exactly how it should have went down. You just felt his hand hit your right boob. Your body shook as you chuckled. And then, he opened his mouth out of shock as you pushed off of him, swimming a few inches away. He watched you, grabbing the shoulder straps of your swimsuit, pulling it down, eyes widening. He couldn't believe what was happening. That this was happening. You grabbed the wrist of his right hand and placed it on your chest, his hand gripping tightly around your flesh. The water felt soft and slippery. You pulled your head back, large bubbles leaving your mouth, the sound of a water-muffled moan reaching his ears. <laughs> it was making him strangely proud. After catching yourself, you realized he was running out of air again, and so you continued breathing into him. But as you did, you pushed your tongue into his mouth as well. I'm gonna lose my virginity or to a fucking fish. He thought. As you felt for his pants. You wouldn't just end this with some mouth to mouth. You'd make sure of that. <laughs> 